Hello friends, welcome to my channel and explore the world of Microsoft Azure. My name is Rajneesh Kaushik and I'm a Microsoft Certified Trainer, Consultant and an Enterprise Architect. For more latest videos and blogs, you can always log into my website rajneeshkaushik.com and subscribe to my blog. Please do not forget to subscribe my channel and click the bell icon so you don't miss the latest videos. Do like, share and comment. Today's module is Container Services. In this module, we are going to cover these topics. First, we will learn about the difference between containers versus virtual machines. Then we will understand the Microsoft provided platform as a service offering called Azure Container Instances and its uh, mechanism to group different containers inside it called container groups. Then we will touch base on Docker and its terminology. And finally, we will wrap up this module with a live demo of SQL Server 2019 on Azure Container Services. So let's get started. A difference between containers versus virtual machines. Container provides a very lightweight isolation and it does not provide a very strong security boundary while virtual machines provide a complete isolation and very strong security boundary. For containers to run, we only need a user mode of, uh, portion of the operating system and some fewer apps, uh, fewer resources. But when it comes to virtual machine, you require a full operating system along with CPU, memory and storage. We can deploy containers with the help of Docker CLI or we can, you know, we can use Kubernetes orchestrator if you are deploying multiple containers together. Uh, in virtual machines, we can deploy it with the help of PowerShell. We can deploy it with the help of uh, Hyper-V Manager, System Center Virtual Machine Manager, or Windows Admin Center. When it comes to persistent storage um, in containers, we can use Azure Disk and attach that Azure Disk to the single node of the uh, container. Or you can use Azure File Share uh, or SMB Share if you are want if you want to use the same Azure file share across the multiple nodes in the container. For virtual machines, you can use VHD for a single machine or you can use SMB file share for multiple machines. Fault tolerant perspective, if uh, you know in a cluster one node fail, then you know a orchestrator can uh, recreate that node uh, very easily. Uh, but in case of virtual machine, if you are deploying a virtual machine inside a cluster and if that VM fails, then it can fail over to the another VM in the same cluster. Azure Container Instances, it's a Microsoft Azure's platform as a service offering. It has a very fast startup time. Containers can be started in seconds without need to provision or manage any virtual machine. Containers can be exposed to the internet with an IP address and FQDN. Container provides hypervisor level security and isolation. Running your application in container is as isolated as if you are running an application in the virtual machine. Container provides custom sizes and they can be scaled dynamically to match actual resource demands for your application. Container supports direct mounting of Azure file shares. You have a choice of using Linux based or Windows based containers. Containers also provide uh, co-scheduled groups, which means that you can deploy multi-container groups hosted inside the same host virtual machine. You can also deploy containers inside the virtual network as if you are deploying any other virtual machine or any other resources inside the Azure. Container groups. Container group is a top level resource in Azure Container Instances. It's actually a collection of containers that get scheduled on the same host. The containers in the group shares the same lifecycle resources, local network and storage volumes. In this example, you can see that this container group hosts two different containers. One of the container listens on port 1433, another one listens on port 80. It is assigned a DNS name and IP address to so that it can be exposed to the internet. Both of these containers are mount, having a Azure file shares, uh, which is mounted on these containers. There are some 
common scenarios where we can use this container groups. For example, in this example, if you see there is this web application in the backend database. So the request hits to the web application and internally, whenever a data fetch happens, it happens from this container. There can be several scenarios like this. One scenario can be an application container and a logging container. The logging container collects the log and matrix output by the main application and writes them to the long-term storage. Then there can be another example wherein a container serving a web application and a container pulling the latest content from the source control. Docker is a platform that enables software developers to host applications within a container. A container is essentially a standalone package that contains everything that is needed to execute a piece of software. This means that it can include things like application executable code, application environment such as .NET Core, system tools, and different set of settings. Docker platform is available both on Linux flavor and Windows and it can be easily hosted on Azure. The key thing is that Docker provides a guarantee that the containerized software will always run the same way regardless of whether it is being run locally on a Windows or Linux or in the cloud environment in Azure. Now let's learn the Docker terminology. Container. Container is an instance of a Docker image which is currently running. Like take an example of a SQL 2019 container which hosts SQL Server 2019 inside it. So container is nothing but execution of a single application process and survey or service. It contains the Docker image, its execution environment and some certain set of instructions. So take an example, when you scale an application, you create multiple instance of the same container instance. Or if you create a bad job, you create a multiple containers from the same image and you create it by passing different set of parameters for each instance. Now, what is container image? Container image is a package which has all its dependencies and information required to create a container. Because we create a container with the help of container image. And when you say container image, it contains all the dependencies, frameworks, deployment, and execution configuration, which will be used by the container runtime when it creates a container instance. Usually when we create a container image, it is usually derived from different base images, which is layered, stacked on top of each other to form the container file system. And once this image is created, you cannot change anything into it because it is immutable. Now comes build. What is build? Build is process of building a container image based on the information provided by the Docker metadata file, which is called Docker file, and additional files and folders where the image is built. So that is called the build process. You can also build images with a docker build command, which is a docker command line command. Push and pull. Pull means pulling the uh, images from the container registry or downloading the images from the container registry, which is a centralized registry to host the different set of images. One example of docker registry is docker hub. Push. Push is a process of uploading your images into the container registry. Docker file. Docker file is a text file which contains all the instructions on how to build your Docker image. It is like a batch script kind of file. Okay. And in this file, it contains the base image and the instructions to install the required programs in, inside that image and so that all the environment can be built in that. Now we have learned enough and we have built solid understanding about Docker's and Azure Container Services. So now let's um, deploy SQL Server 2019 on Azure Container Services. 
in this demo, first we are going to create a resource group. Then we will create a SQL Server container. We will also collect a log from the SQL Server and then view these logs. We will run a SQL CMD command on the SQL Server and see whether our command is successfully running or not. So let's get started. We will use Azure CLI to showcase this demo. I am using Ubuntu uh, Windows shell for executing my Azure CLI command. So let's get started. First, I will use AZ login to log into Azure environment. Okay, so I am logged in now. Then I am going to create a Azure resource group. The resource group name will be container RG. It will be created in the East US. Then I am going to create a container image and let's understand this. So, so this command creates a container with this image. The image is SQL Server 2019 latest image. The name of the container will be SQL 2019. You can name it anything, whatever you want. The resource group will be container RG. And remember, we created this resource group in our earlier command here. Container RG resource group. Then we are going to use this uh, configuration for CPU, one core CPU, memory, 3.5 GB memory, port 1433, IP address, public IP address, and then a remaining part of this is a environment variable, which is uh, SQL as a password. That means uh, password to login for the SA password in SQL Server. And then this will be created in the East US location and the DNS name will be SQL Server then. So let's see. It's running now. Now it is completed and you can see that our container is ready. Now we will open a SQL Server Management Studio and connect to this instance. And also we will check whether this, um, ins this is created or not successfully. So we now see that there is this container RG resource group already there. And we can also see that this uh, container is already created. And let's go and see what is the FQDN of the container. This is the FQDN of the container. So I can now log into this container and check whether it works fine or not. I have opened SQL Server Management Studio. And uh, we will log in with the credential provided there. So in this, I am using SQL Server I'm going to use this FQDN SA and then the password. So if you remember the password which we have used, we have used this password. The password is password at 001. Okay. So I'm going to use this password and see whether it connects. Yes, it worked and it shows you the databases. We don't have any databases created, but it is working fine. Now, as a next step, we are going to see the logs coming from SQL Server container. For that, we are going to use this Azure container log command. So this is Azure container logs the resource group name and the name of the container. So let's see whether it shows you the logs or not. Yes, it shows you the logs. Now we are going to use SQL CMD command and see whether SQL CMD command, we can fire the SQL on this newly created container instance or not. So for that, I am going to use command prompt. 
because I have SQL CMD command deployed in my uh, Windows system and I'm going to use this SQL CMD command. So in this command, I'm going to use the SQL CMD and the IP address. So first of all, let's check whether the IP address is correct or not. So if you see here, the IP address is, um, one second, the IP address of this is, this IP address is, which is 52.142.35.113. So this is the correct IP address. So now let's go back and change this command to reflect the correct IP address. This is the correct IP address. This is the SA password which we have used. And this is the exact command which you want to run on the command prompt on the SQL CMD. So this command should work successfully. Yes, it works successfully. It shows you the version of Microsoft SQL Server 2019 and the exact version which is deployed on the container. With this, we have successfully created a container. We have successfully viewed the logs coming out of the container and also executed the SQL CMD command on the container. I hope you enjoyed this video. Thanks for watching and do not forget to subscribe and hit the bell icon so you don't miss any new video.